It is a wow. fascinating story and, mm. and, and, and a beautiful story. Um, your relationship is incredible. So she was first diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2006. And, um, and, you, and you say she wanted to be in control of it. That's right, yeah. So from the start, Wendy got into the driving seat and stayed in the driving seat with her own health. So she didn't get on the conveyor belt of cancer mm. and just sort of do as the doctor said. She decided to do her own research and I researched with her. And she chose to take a natural health path. And during the course of the 10 years, she refused chemotherapy, refused radiotherapy. She thought that would kill her. And uh, on her medical record, it said refusing Western medicine. Is that what it said? And yeah. actually, she surprised everybody, and even her oncologist was amazed, because the tumour had reduced so much that it was almost not, not seen on any of the scans. Well, originally, in fairness, she had a radical hysterectomy, so the tumour was taken away. But it, right. it returned after five years. We'd made lots and lots of lifestyle changes with diet and lots of other things during that time. But the, the tumour came back, so it wasn't enough, the work that we'd done. And it was in the following year that Wendy got completely rid of the tumour. So that was what amazed their oncologist. That was the one. Yeah. And then at 4.40 a.m. on the 21st of April, she peacefully passed away. And I think it's that next step, your relationship with death, that ultimate taboo we have in our society, um, which has got so much attention and so much support, um, because we do have a very unhealthy relationship with death, don't we? In my opinion, I'd say we do, yes. Mm. So, I mean, the, the, the back story to us having Wendy in our bedroom for six days was that we developed our own sort of spiritual belief system based on picking the best bits that we thought from Buddhism, paganism, North American Indian tradition. We also studied Steiner's work. And, and we kind of uh, made our own spiritual belief system, which was based on the belief in re reincarnation. So we wanted to believe that we'd been together before and that we'd be together again. This, this gave us comfort. Mm -hmm. Wendy was not afraid of dying from the start, so as well as getting in the driving seat on her health, she didn't have that fear. And neither did I, in fairness. So not having that fear was a real, real asset to the whole journey. Yeah. And then basically, we kind of came across some information from different sort of spiritual belief systems about what to do at death. And, and the Buddhists, for example, believe the spirit might take up to three days to transcend. Uh, the Steiner community that we spoke to said that the body can, the spirit can sometimes get confused and not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So they sit with their dead. Um, in vigil and um, to reassure the spirit what's going on in familiar surroundings with familiar people. Mm. So myself and Wendy talked about this openly and we planned that that's what we'd do. Well, I mean, there are, pra there are practicalities here. I mean, you had a, you had a lovely wicker, wicker coffin which you we put her in in the bedroom and then so you could, you could be t t together in the same room um, at night time and, uh, and, and people would come and they would, would see her. And you say that when your heart truly broke was, where, was the fact that she looked so beautiful and, and it, was, it was your family that that tended to her body um, because you didn't want that the, the, the undertakers to come in and put her in the body bag and take her to the morgue and there's no legal reason to do that is there? Not that we're aware of no so um, we wanted Wendy wanted to die at home which she did so we nursed her I mean people in Wendy's condition at the end would have probably been in a hospice in, in Macmillan Ward but we cared for her that was important to us and then yeah when she died most people I think they call the the undertakers and within a couple of hours their dead are taken in a black plastic bag to a refrigerator for a few weeks until the, the, the funeral. Mm. We just couldn't bear the idea of that. I think in fairness it wasn't until we'd been sitting with Wendy for a few days that, or you know, a day or so that we started to realise the real impact of this and we, we the, myself and our four boys were all very close. We sort of were saying how on earth could we be dealing with this if someone had just taken Wendy's body away mm. and we, we, we realised that we, we, we were being healed and helped so much by her presence still being with us. So it really helped your grief process? It really helped mm. our grief process. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't, I now in hindsight don't know how we would have coped if we hadn't, hadn't done it done that it. way. And it seemed so normal for us. It didn't seem weird or unusual. It just seemed totally natural. And what we had was Wendy in the room with us. Yeah. Mm. And a body, and, a, and, and, and as, as and you've said, you know, you're very honest. You're very open. You said, "Ask me anything." I mean, Absolutely. there are ways to tread around this, but yeah. um, I, I would say, for those six days, um, a body left uh, without professional help uh, still 
behaves itself. I mean, it, it was, it totally, was in no way yeah, an, an upsetting Yeah, she totally behaved moment. herself. So when we, when we first, I watched Wendy's Body Ceremony, I'd watched a film called De The Departure, a Japanese film about, and how they treat their dead. And I, I not for hygiene reasons, but for sort of ritual reasons, yeah. washed Wendy's body. We then put her in a lovely little cotton dress and then laid her out in her coffin. We put a little bit of lipstick on, a little bit of makeup. Before that, I'd put some padded pants on her, the practicalities of in case there were any leaks. Mm. And I also put some bed pads underneath the sheet that we'd put in the coffin, just in case. Mm. Because I had heard that you can get leaks. Mm. But we didn't get anything like that. There was no leaks. The body didn't deteriorate in any crazy way. There was no smells. I made a decision because we're really in tune with nature and the natural health sort of road that we've been down has been trying to be living our lives as, as natural as possible. And for me, being with the dead body, watching it slightly decay was just part of nature. Yeah. For, from my point of view, if Wendy had started to smell, in fact, even if she'd started to stink, which I have to say she didn't at all, mm. that would have been fine. The smell would have gone from the house, but it would have been nature.